Introducing the all new Corolla. If the power were to go out at the Port Authority of Guam's administration building, employees would not be able to continue working. That's because the port does not have a working backup generator. According to Port General Manager Joanne Brown, all but one of its generators are offline or burnt out. And that last generator, LC1, is currently in use to power up refrigerated containers. As you know, earlier this year in May, after LC4 went down, in terms of the power lines, we um, actually over a period of several weeks ran the generator at LC4. Unfortunately, that particular unit burned up. As a result, we had to remove the uh, generator from LC1 and relocate it in LC4 in order to operate our refrigeration areas. LC1 was previously being used as a backup generator for the port's administration building. If we were off GPA power line, I have no ability to run the administration building. I mean, we could survive opening our windows. Uh, we won't be able to operate our computers. We won't be able to operate IT. We won't be able to process anything. So transactions here at the port will come to a standstill. Brown also says it's not just the administration building that's at risk because of the downed generators. LC2 is also down. LC3 is also down. LC4 has the one single generator. And of course, LC5 will be constructed when we do the <coughs> remaining work for the expansion of the, of the yard. Aside from the disruption of operations here, what adverse impact would this have on the community? I think it would be quite significant because um, if our one generator goes down to operate the refrigerated containers, I mean, we have millions of dollars of, of commodities that are there from both food to medicine that we would be concerned about. So why not just replace the generators that are down through procurement? Brown says it's not that simple. She had requested an emergency procurement with the General Services Agency, but she says that GSA has told them that the timeline for procurement would go beyond the 30-day limit for emergency procurements. Another option the port could choose is to do a construction contract with the Department of Public Works, since the new generators would require some form of construction and underground digging. So we have DPW telling us, yes, we recommend you move forward with a construction contract, and we have GSA saying, no, we will not allow you to move forward with a construction contract, and we want you to come through GSA to procure the generators. Brown told the Port Authority Board that she has requested an emergency declaration from the governor, which would give the port the green light to move forward with its own procurement. Meanwhile, another pressing issue Brown discussed at the board meeting was the port's union contract with the Guam Federation of Teachers. She says language in the current collective bargaining agreement does not work well with the port's operational structure. The contract, drafted under previous port management, says Brown, requires GFT members employed at the port to work eight-hour shifts Monday to Friday. But right now, the the requirement or the language that says employees work Monday to Friday, of course anything over that would be viewed as overtime. Um, when the ships pull in primarily on the weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some days Thursday, we're talking about out of a pay period of 10 working days on average workers only working eight or less days and two days really they wouldn't have anything physically to do. Brown says she would prefer that the employees work 10 hour shifts four days a week on the heaviest days of operation. Board member Christine Belletto says the Monday to Friday structure currently in place has already cost the port millions of dollars in overtime. And just to note, since since this uh, Monday through Friday eight hour a day uh, work week has been implemented, and I think you know the management had done so in in the spirit of the GFT contract, our overtime because that is not what is needed has arisen in this last fiscal year almost 300 percent. We are spending millions of dollars on overtime because of this schedule.